admitting the waiting room. Just give it one moment for everyone to enter. And I am going to mute all participants. Good morning. This is an emergency informational hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is August 13th. This is an emergency informational hearing regarding beer gardens and large temporary extensions. This hearing is being held to address the numerous complaints received by the board and the inspectional services department regarding the operations of certain licensees. Please note that this hearing is being recorded. It will be posted on the city's website within 24 hours. It is being conducted pursuant to temporary modifications to the open meeting law issued by Governor Baker. That is what allows us to meet virtually today. While the vast majority of licensees in the city of Boston are working diligently to adapt to the changing guidance and to provide a safe dining experience for patrons, the board has received numerous complaints of COVID-19 operational violations specific to beer gardens and high capacity temporary extensions. These violations include long lines of patrons waiting to enter and be seated, failure of these patrons to social distance in line, patrons not wearing masks in line, patrons standing, congregating, and not wearing masks when ordering or picking up food and alcoholic beverages, tables not separated by six feet or more, parties of larger than six patrons, dogs that are not licensed service dogs being on premise, Supposed, uh, emotional support dogs are not permitted, unpermitted entertainment. Public health and safety are of the utmost importance to the board and the purpose of this emergency informational hearing is to ensure that all of our licensees are operating in a way that, com that conforms with the Commonwealth's guidance and operational requirements, and ensures the health, safety, health and safety of each licensee's patrons, employees, and the general public. I again want to emphasize that while we have received a number of complaints, we have also received a lot of positive feedback regarding your respective operations and your attempts to comply with all of the governor's guidance and the board's advisories. And with that, I will introduce Kathleen Joyce, who is the chairwoman of the board. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us today. I just want to take a moment to introduce Commissioner Kiana Saxon, Commissioner Liam Curran. We're also joined by uh, Commissioner Dan Manning at ISD, Captain Boyle. And I think Detective Hernandez, who I, I don't see right now in front of my screen. Um, I want to reiterate what Leslie described. This, this is a hearing, um, to an informational hearing, and we want to, um, it's meant to be conversational and educational, educational in nature. This is not a disciplinary hearing at all. We understand that the guidelines and regulations are changing based on incoming public health metrics, and a majority of our licensees are working really hard to adhere to them. The board is committed to working with all of you to provide as much guidance as possible. We scheduled this hearing before the governor's guidance came out on our own calendars. And since the governor's guidance came out, we've been working very hard to figure out how those guidelines um, affect your license premises. Um, as you're aware, the governor issued his, an executive order mandating, among other things, that food must not just be available, but the licensee must provide table service of food which must be ordered with the first drink, and that food must be prepared on site pursuant to a valid food service permit or CV issued by the municipality. The governor's executive order and accompanying guidance also state that no licensee may permit a line to form either inside or outside of the license premise. So that means you're responsible for making sure that the people waiting to come into your license premise um, are, are wearing masks and are socially distanced. No licensee may permit a line to form inside or outside. If you're not operating with a valid CV license issued by the board or food permit, then you must cease operations. If you have hit your maximum social distancing capacity, you must disperse any patrons seeking to enter. You cannot allow the lines to form outside or inside. If you have food trucks or food stations, you have to be sure that people don't line up to get their food. The city and the board legally do not have the ability to be more flexible than the governor's requirements. We understand that these guidelines may be confusing, 
We're working diligently ourselves to interpret them and to help you understand them. We may not have answers to all of your questions and it's your responsibility to carefully review the guidelines issued by the state and to ensure that you're in compliance. With that, we will ask uh, Commissioner Manning if he has um, anything he would like to say from Inspectional Services. Uh, thank you, Leslie, and thank you, uh, Commissioners. Uh, and thank you all for being on today. Yeah, so just to reiterate what uh, Commissioner Joyce had said, or Chairwoman Joyce had said, um, we are now in a position where, where food service has to be prepared on site. And in many cases, that is, that is, that is already happening. Uh, but this does mean that, you know, folks that have been using um, prepackaged foods and, you know, other, other methods of getting food on site is no longer going to be allowed. You're going to be required to have either your own food operation on site or um, in the event of a beer garden or such, you'll, you'll, you'll be required to have a, um, a food truck or, 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 or something of that nature. I know that it, it's difficult for many of these locations to have their own operation and, and it, so it will require that you have a food truck and that food truck, um, regardless of where the food service comes from, it's gonna require a um, table service and you know our inspectors will be out to review all of these processes as you go along and you can always reach out to our office to with any additional guidance on the food safety uh, portion of this and uh, secondly yes we, we we have been responding to a number of complaints like the licensing board regarding crowding at bars crowding um, at these venues people not seating seated at tables or at um, at the at these i'm sorry not see the tables and also not sir i'm not being served food so that obviously was what has resulted in the governor's change to requiring food service and we will be out as uh the, as well as the licensing board the health inspectors will be out at any venue that has been granted these these licenses to review your processes so thank you leslie i just wanted to add one more thing um Right now, under the state's guidelines, if you're um, doing a restaurant buyout or hosting a special event, whether it's a wedding or birthday party or a bridal shower, you have to adhere to the special events guidelines. Even if your restaurant's capacity could be 200 people, if you're closing the restaurant for a wedding, the number can not be any greater than 25. Thank you, Chairwoman. And just to be clear, again, this hearing today is, uh, as the chairwoman stated, it's a conversation. We understand that uh, all of our licensees, for the, for the most part, are really trying to adapt and do the right thing. And we want to emphasize that the purpose of reopening has been for a dining experience. It's one of the reasons that we're not permitting any entertainment on these uh, new beer gardens or temporary extensions. And again, we want to emphasize that we are here to work with you. Right now, we might not have all the answers. And if you, once you review all the governor's guidelines, if you do not feel that you meet the requirements of prepared food prepared on site, you have to cease operations. Again, we're happy to work with you to try and get to a point where you do it here, but it is the responsibility of each licensee to review these guidelines carefully and ensure that you are complying. And with that, I don't know if anyone had questions or wanted to pose anything to the board, but we, we do want to emphasize that we are working around the clock to make ourselves and our staff available to answer any questions and to work with you uh, to look at creative solutions to keep people open and operating in a safe manner. Yes, this is uh, Matthew Malloy from Dorchester Brewing. I'd like to ask a question if possible. Is that sure. okay? Yes. So um, it's interesting. We are in full compliance. We have a kitchen um, and we, of course, the first day this was an enacted, we actually had uh, menu items that met the shareable as provided by my legal counsel. They said it meets the shareable um, guidelines as well as full meals. Um, ironically, we've already been written up by the state saying that what we've provided isn't sufficient enough, even though it is actually, I actually engaged legal counsel to determine and interpret uh, the, the documentation that was provided to us. I think what would be very helpful potentially is as these citations come down from the state, if there's a way that we could work with a liaison uh, to resolve this because, um, you know, I, I paid already $1,000 to work with a lawyer to identify what is actually a shareable item. 
And obviously there's very little definition and information provided by the state in that. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's just concerning to me that we've already been written up for this and we, we deemed to be in full compliance. You know, we do have a full kitchen on site. Additionally, adding on to that, one of the things that is interesting that is actually uh, not uh, in their guidance is, you know, as, as you can imagine, our restaurant, we, uh, we are open until 11 and our restaurant closes at 10, as an example. Um, we do make menu items available uh, that meet the shareable components that were actually, everything was produced on site um, and they're in a hot box and my staff, you can still order them and get them and get delivered to a table and they're saying that that is actually not viable that the restaurant has to be open. And what I'm saying is the food, it is, the rest of the food is available for order and the kitchen is actually open. It's just my staff um, getting uh, those items out of the hot box and delivering it to the table. So as you can imagine this interpretation that's happening, I, I, I don't know how to respond back to the state with these because, because I wanna, I feel that we're doing the right thing. And I guess the question is, you know, it, it, obviously they've cited me for two different things already. Uh, it, is is there a better way to work with the state? Like they don't even have a phone number. They don't respond to emails. They're probably so busy, but it's just like, we're trying to do the right thing. And, and if there's a corrective measure that needs to happen, I just don't know who to talk to around that with the state. I don't know, is there, is, I don't know, is there a different way of communicating with the state on this? Or is there a liaison in the city that could help us? Um, Matt, they, thank you for providing that information. Um, I would ask if you could, obviously, we have not been made aware of any uh, of any citation that has been issued. I don't believe ISD has either. Um, if you could separately forward that to us, we're happy to work with you and uh, reach out to the state and see how they would like uh, our licensees here in Boston, because we obviously have many more than anywhere else to work directly with them. But I, I don't think at this time we have an answer, but we're happy to continue working with you. That would be and, great. And, and Matt, to echo what Leslie is saying and to everyone here, if you have specific questions, we're willing to collect those questions and um, try to find someone at the state to answer your specific question. And that's why we're, we're hoping to, uh, we're hoping to use these hearings for that because there are, there are a lot of nuances. There's a lot of different operator, operating plans and we, we're, getting, we're getting hit with the questions, um, you know, hourly. So what we're trying to do is to synthesize those to see what um, is and isn't acceptable. But I do appreciate the fact that this reopening um, was done to help restaurants get back on their feet. But we're trying to do this with public health as our number one priority. And I think these regulations and guidelines, or I'm certain they are, they're written with public health in mind. They don't want people sitting at tables drinking rounds of drinks for hours and hours. They want people to have food and beverage and then to move on. So I think there could be an argument made that people probably aren't eating dinner at 12 p.m. I'm not saying at your licensed premise, but trying to see what the intent and the policy is behind them and then to work with you guys to interpret them. Um, there's some suggestions that there should be reservation systems, but that isn't mandated. It's just something you might want to think about with your business model. I wasn't aware that you had been, been written up as either. Um, so we'll work with you. If you want to put some of your questions together, we'll try to... Um, We'll, we do have a contact at the state. We don't work with them directly, but someone at City Hall does. And we'll make sure that they um, address those questions. That, that would be great. And you bring up another point, which I think is a really important thing to uh, address. I mean, if there is um, hours of operation that they're now requiring us to trim back to, to meet the intent, um, that would be good to know as well. Uh, meaning, if, like, so for instance, on Fridays and Saturdays, we're open till midnight and food is served until midnight. But if the intent is to bring this down to a traditional restaurant and trim hours back to 10 or 11, that would be something that I would be, we would want further guidance on as well. We haven't heard that. You haven't heard that? That's great. Thank God. <laughs> we heard about this as well the first time everyone else did when, um, on Friday. Yeah, and I just want to underscore, by the way, I, I have to say that everybody on your team has been unbelievably helpful around this. And so we're all learning together. But I just wanted to pat the city on the back to say, I can't even imagine what you're going through right now. I'm just one business and um, I just thoroughly appreciate everything that you're doing and the attention you're bringing to this and the support you're providing to us. So thank you. Thanks. And I'm sorry, I, I, I was remiss to not ask Captain Boyle and Captain not to put you on the spot, but if you wanted to make any comments, I know both the captain and our licensed premise unit have actually been responding and investigating uh, any complaint that comes in. Um, some have been valid and some have not been. We've, we've definitely seen that the vast majority of our operators are doing the right thing. 
Um, so, Captain, I'm not sure if you wanted to, to say anything. No, I'll just say, you know, we know things have been changing, so we're trying to work with people. We've been getting really good cooperation, so uh, we're not looking to cite if we don't have to. We're looking to work with the establishment. So, we're available for any any um, questions or to assist in any way. But uh, we realize things are confusing at times, so we're trying to work with people, not, not cite right away. Thank you. And someone um, with the name, thank you, Captain. Damien has raised their hand asking if they could speak. Is there Damien present? Oh, Damien, I don't think we can hear you. We'll, we'll come back to Damien. I think he's, uh, he's having some technological issues. Um, we did just receive a message from Ryan Shockley um, asking for clarification on whether it was acceptable for guests to retrieve their own food or whether it's not. Uh, that is something that uh, I believe we are looking for clarification on as well. The governor's uh, guidance and executive order very uh, specifically stated it must be seated table service. Um, I think our interpretation has been it is strongly recommended that you provide table service. Um, obviously, as the chairwoman said, we, we are just trying to get to the intent of of this executive order. Um, Chair they, they don't want lines forming and they don't want clustering. So if you can ensure that people go get their own food and there is no line forming or clustering, then I, then I think you're safe. But I, I think the safest thing to do would be to have a food server bring the food to the table so that people aren't walking around. Um, and I believe uh, John Linscom from Turtle Swamp has asked if he could pose a question. John, are you present? Yes, hi. Uh, uh, can you hear me, Leslie? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just to, to start off, to echo uh, what uh, our dear friend um, Matt at BBC was saying, you guys are working around the clock. I, uh, we are very grateful, even to Rebecca, who appears to be living in some sort of weird la-la land up there. Um, <laughs> hey, Rebecca. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, um, uh, my question is specific about we are currently not uh, uh, not operating. Um, we have been operating under uh, so I'll speak to the um, to the JP Brewery right now. Uh, we've been operating almost exclusively with outdoor service. All services required to be seated. Um, even our staff is sits if they want to walk out on my patio. Um, I'm also here with the, my other co-owner Nick Walter, uh, just so you know who the mask man is. Um, my question is 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 pointed. Um, we're operating under uh, an FS recently approved for eating and drinking. And so um, I had, like many, uh, been serving sandwiches, which I know, Leslie, you had approved. They've been prepared in a, in a commissary off-site. Um, will the FS be satisfactory if we were to say, instead of sandwiches, uh, to get a hot dog machine and provide hot dogs to every guest? Uh, would it be satisfactory if we were to um, make paninis or some sort of cheese sandwiches and provide those to every guest um, to operate under the FS or will we need to extend on that um, or is that a is that to work with the uh, ISD who's been fantastic Tom McAdams and his crew is great so um, what is your recommendation on moving forward so that hopefully we could I can get a I can start serving hot dogs tomorrow but we just are hoping that we could come up with something that will be substantial food, as Matt uh, referred to, uh, and at the same time allow us to operate uh, the outdoor beer garden exclusively um, both in both locations by providing, what is, what the hell is substantial? <laughs> These are really great questions. I'd say you should work directly with Dan and Tom. They have been great. Okay. Um, but I, I want to let you know, we're trying to figure this out just as much as you are. We could say yes to you today, and then the state could say that's not what our interpretation was. So I would hate to say this is a yes, and then you get inspected tonight and you get written up. Um, we're just trying to help you. We're trying to put the tools in place for you to operate safely and within the guidelines. So definitely work with Dan and his team. Tom will walk you through it. Um, a, a sandwich prepared on site could be fine. Um, is Are it, hot dogs prepared on site, uh, Commissioner, appropriate? 
Chair, I'll jump in. Um, we're trying to determine that, like like the chairwoman said. We're, I mean, obviously, there's there's a whole host of options, right? You, you mentioned panini press, hot dog on site. Um, you could even argue a microwave pizza is prepared on site, right? So there's, there's a whole host of options for prepared on site, um, provided that you have a a food service permit from from our division at the at ISD. But we, we're not we're not prepared to answer that question yet. We're just waiting for some, a little more clarity and guidance from 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 the other state's interpretation on that. But as you come up with plans, please submit them to ISD's health division, and we'll review them. And then once we have a clear answer, um, we will certainly uh, make those determinations. Yeah, that that's that's excellent. Uh, then I've been sending. Uh, we do have plans, and kindly uh, uh, Leslie and uh, uh, and her team requested those. Um, and so we sent them in. Um, should I be sending them to Tom and uh, our inspectors, Maria? Um, who, 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 who should be our point person to determine? We, um, we, we must be food safe. There's no right. question. And, so, and I won't open until you guys tell me to open. <laughs> so for everyone on the call, if you're in the same situation as, uh, as, as the brewery, um, you, can, you can email me um, your, your plans. It's Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L dot R dot manning m-a-n-n-i-n-g at boston.gov and you know uh, uh, tom has been taking a lead on a lot of these a lot of these issues for us but i think that we're gonna have to spread some spread some of that love around because we're gonna have a lot of a lot of you that need that need attention and uh, i think we're gonna have to have the other principal inspectors uh, assist on that so again that's right. daniel <laughs> daniel dot r dot manning at boston.gov and Rebecca has been kind enough to put Dan uh, Dan's uh, email in the chat, which I know he appreciates her facilitating that. Um, one one question that was just sent was uh, asking for advice on how to manage your lines. Um, one of the largest concerns that we've heard from people has been lines, um, and we know that again, everyone on this call has been. Anything we ask, you've been adapting. Anything that the state asks, you've been adapting, and we do appreciate that. Ultimately, how you manage your line is a business decision. The state's guidance said no lines. So if you hit capacity, I think our advice would be collect a, a cell phone number and turn them away. Um, you, I think you're going to have to disperse patrons because we've heard all over the city, and this is absolutely not unique to beer gardens, but we've heard about the struggles people have had, not just managing the lines, but ensuring people wear their masks in line and social distance in line. We understand that it is a struggle, um, but I think some of, we've been saying to people, you know, no mask, no food, no service. If they, if they can't adhere to what you're asking them to do, and if they can't play by the rules, they can't come into your license establishment. Because at the end of the day, it is your license, it's your livelihood that's on the line. Um, and we are here to work with you uh, and to you know, help you every way we can. But I think we're all adapting and, and all learning about this together. With that, we, I think I'll, I'll, in a moment, turn back to Kathleen for just closing remarks, but we do want to say thank you. We have over 100 people on this call. We have far fewer than 100 beer gardens, so we know that there's a lot of people listening and learning. Please do not hesitate to contact us with questions. Um, if you are receiving citations, it would be uh, great if you could forward them to us. Uh, I'll ask Rebecca if she could put our licensing board email in the chat. Um, and. Uh, before I pass it on to Kathleen, I just got a, another message about food trucks. Food trucks are, that does meet the requirement. So food trucks at beer gardens absolutely meets the requirement. Something to keep in mind is that if your food truck does not show up, you cannot open, right? So just, just keep that in mind when you're, uh, when you're making your business decisions and, and thinking about your operations. Um, and with that, I will turn it back to Chairwoman Joyce. Thank you, Leslie. And just a, a few final things to share. I want to acknowledge Somerville Licensing Chair Jill Lynch, who's, who has joined us. But also, I want to say thank you to all of the operators. I know you're doing your best. The city knows you're doing best. your best. We really want to work with you. We don't want to shut you down. And I am um, convinced that the guidelines that, are, that have been put out and that continue to change are there for everyone's safety. And um, it's just a matter of us interpreting them and applying them to the business plans that you have at your establishments. With that being said, we had a morning meeting this morning with public health, and we understand public confidence is a big piece of this. Some of the complaints that come into ISD and to our office are people who are afraid when they drive by or they're at a restaurant and they see the staff not wearing masks or they see what appears to be tables clustered together 
or people standing at a bar. We have not seen that when we've gone out and done our inspections. What we have seen is people trying to operate safely. And we understand that we need to get the word out as a city that our operators are doing the best they can. So we are working with public health in the next couple of weeks to come up with some um, information for you to share with customers, for us to share with the public that you have taken this pledge to put public health first and that you're operating safely. So more on that to come, but we understand where you're coming from. I know everyone who took the time to join this call is doing their best to operate safely. We're here to help you. If there's any specific questions, reach out to us. If you're, if you're confused, reach out to us. We'll try to, we'll try to help you. Boston Police, I know, is trying to help you. Um, I'm proud of our, our team that's gone out, and I know they've had multiple conversations with you and with customers. They want people to feel safe and to come back. We want to see our neighborhoods come back. We want to see our licensees succeed. So if, there, if you have any ideas or if you have any questions, please reach out to us. And thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you all very much.